What's going on, everybody? Welcome to another episode of Hollywood Already Did It, your weekly movie podcast for movies that have been rebooted, remade, sequelized, adapted, or otherwise not an original idea or from an existing IP, and whether or not we need to keep telling these stories over and 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 over again. As always, I am your host, Blake Schultz, and with me is Terrence Tatum. Hello, everyone. And this week, we're finally here after... After no trailers and no posters and mysteries and the worst kept secrets in Hollywood and what are we doing and what's it going to be and delays and delays and delays, like every movie that we've started this year, the delays, they're still coming. They won't end, but we are finally here to talk about the third and final chapter of this specific trilogy, the 27th MCU movie and the one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight overall spider-man film spider-man no way home tom holland's third entry into the series an extravaganza picking up right after where the last one left off doctor strange is there we're not going to spoil it right away we'll warn you when we're about to because you still have time but there are so many secrets and surprises in this movie and we're finally here and i'm just so happy that we're here even though (laughs) spider-man fans have been well fed since like the 90s yeah, so we ha- the, the Spider-Man fans haven't been struggling at all. Uh, no, we them, them and the Batman fans are fine. <laughs> yeah, we had a cartoon. Yeah, we had an Ultimate Comics line rebooted that was pretty much that entire line of that universe for years. Games. We had a uh, we had games. We had a 2002 movie, and then a movie every two years after that. Even if some of those were just appearances, we've brought together studios. We have included a Spider-Man and Spider-Woman of every conceivable fashion. We've invigorated a new character. We we have been we've been eating for some time, <laughs> and yet we are never satisfied. No. But uh, I was satisfied this time. What did you think about Spider-Man: No Way Home? Uh... I can't stop thinking about this movie. Like it's been on my brain. Consi- and as we saw this mm, about 24 hours ago, uh, I can't stop thinking about it. Like it is, every, pieces of it keep flashing over my in my head from time to time. It is, a f- it is both a fun and entertaining thrill ride filled with nostalgia, but actually tells a story. And it is gut-wrenchingly heartbreaking as well. Like it is very emotional, probably, no, not probably the most emotional Spider-Man movie that we've had. Um, and it swings that pendulum of being both from funny to heartfelt masterfully uh, and, and does it in a way that like when it's over with, you're like, can I, I literally wanted to just be like, can we run that back? Like, let's play, play that again. Because the time, I know it's a two hours and 20 minute film. I don't feel it. Never once checked my watch. Once this movie starts, it does not let you go. It's just like, we're going and we're going off to the races and everything just continues to build and build and build. So we get to a climax that for, for once, a, a lot of the issues that a lot of Marvel films, even the ones that I like, but I love like Black Panther, the third act of a lot of those films becomes like this big, like unnecessarily large action set piece. And this one is a large action set piece, but it, it is very much truncated down to the characters that are that are necessary. And it feels a lot more heartfelt. We get a lot more heartfelt moments that occur within the final action sequence. And it doesn't feel as big. Um, and a lot of that is because the, the the story takes its time when it needs to, to, to tell these emotional beats for, for the characters that are on the board. I'm being vague because we are not in spoilers a little bit, but yes. No, we'll get we'll get to some spoilers because otherwise, I just I, there's just so much to talk about. We could yeah. go beat, but we could go scene by scene for the entire movie and sit here for five hours, and you yeah. would love every minute of it. <laughs> but we're not going to do that because we know that you probably have a life that you need to return to at some point, and you know we're a driver, a commute. You're not here forever, unlike yeah. the Spider-Man franchise. I agree. I loved it from start to finish, and I got to say, I think I was in the vast minority of not really wanting to do a giant multiverse movie right away. I sort of felt that Spider-Verse had that covered. There were a lot of other stories I wanted to see done. I love the Spider-Verse comics that they did back in the day that Dan Slott and and Bendis have both done with Spider-Man and Spider-Verse and all these different variations of it. I don't know how the street level 16 year old kid who was bit by a spider became our catalyst to multiverse stories but here we are (laughs) uh so there we go 
but I, I'm so glad that I got this because it really, everything that I was worried about, uh, like has happened many times with Marvel movies was swayed away. Similar to Civil War where I went, well, I want a Captain America movie, not an Avengers 2.5. That was a Captain America story with other characters. Mm -hmm. This is a Tom Holland Spider-Man movie with so many other characters and so many cameos and, and so many other important big people, yet it never takes away from his journey in the movie. And I think that's one of the most impressive things that Marvel does as a studio that other movies that aren't even part of IPs sometimes can't do. Normally, once the cast gets so big and bombastic, we don't really get a satisfying conclusion to everybody's narrative or whoever the main character is kind of gets lost in the shuffle. But here we stay very focused and we manage to give every other character a satisfying growth a, and development and some, mm -hmm. everybody gets a moment. It's, a it's so up. impressive. Yeah. <clears throat> and I think you're right. The action in this is some of the best action they've done. Some of the cinematography, I think, is some of the most well-shot scenes in Marvel. There's moments that are uh, almost inspired from, like, Netflix's Daredevil and horror imagery and giant church cathedral moments at the time. Like, like 90s gargoyles, backlit stuff, and I love it. It's so cool, and the texture of it is great because you do get a lot of that Doctor Strange weirdness, but you get so many other flavors in this movie that it never loses steam and I, I loved it from start to finish all these actors are at nines they took so many things that haven't worked in past spider-man movies and made them work which is another yeah. great talent that this studio has where they just keep taking the weakest points of a story and going but what if it was the strongest point of the story <laughs> yeah. which is just very rude of them they, to do they very much pull, again in this movie they very much pulled the thor dark world of it all like they did with endgame like remember this this was bad right but what if we made it good <laughs> and i don't know how else to put this other than like it really is a love letter to these movies and the the thing I can only think of to compare it to is the 50th anniversary for Doctor Who, the day of the Doctor that took Matt Smith and David Tennant and John Hurt and a little bit of Chris Eggleston's story, even though he didn't show up for it, and gave you this giant, crazy, weird story that still worked for the story they were telling and never really got away from it, but gave you so much of all those characters. Like they, There's a villain from every past Spider-Man movie here. They don't ignore any part of this character's history in cinema, uh, I should say theatrically released live action cinema, because right. you don't get any Spider-Verse, we don't get any uh, Japanese Spider-Man TV shows, which obviously I would have loved both of those things to yeah. show up. If either of those but, showed up, I might have died in the, in the theater. Actually. There's only so much that I can take in a day. <laughs> there's, <laughs> there's only so much. Like, well, we lost Terrence. <laughs> but if the point of man had shown up in that big robot, I would have lost my mind. <laughs> <laughs> uh, would have lost it. Would have yeah. been, you don't even need. You don't need anything. They could have just had the robot. Would have loved yeah. it. Uh, but there's only so much time in a movie, and only so much that my heart can handle. It is interesting, uh, and I, it doesn't bother me because it does, doesn't bother either of us because we're huge fans, and we. I think we both did a rewatch of the originals before going into this. I will say this: uh, this movie stands on its own. If in the Tom Holland trilogy quite well, but it becomes an even better film if you have watched the previous films uh, within a recent amount of time, because they they call back to a lot of stuff as if you just know it. I think the craziest part when you say that too is there were so many like fandom moments. We've got, you know, certain characters saying certain lines again. Mm -hmm. We have certain memes that people wanted to show up. Right. And all of these things should have bothered me. Because when TikTok gets to make a movie, I should be upset. <laughs> yeah. uh, but here we are, where Twitter and TikTok have kind of made a movie, and I love it. So maybe I've just been incorrect my entire life. Yeah, it's one of the few times where fan service and nostalgia, no, normally it pisses me off because you do, when you do a lot of it or too, too much of it. But they're, they are at the, they're like the salt and pepper to the story the meat that is still going. Like the, the thread of the, the Tom Holland Peter Parker is still what is the the issue of this movie. So anything else that they spray on there is just kind of just an additive and it bolsters it, but it does not take away from that main thread. And I think that's what's so impressive because we really have taken <clears throat> Tom Holland's Spider-Man from, you know, Tony Stark Jr. 
whether or not that's your flavor. I don't really mind it. it I know yeah. people want I, there. I also want my street level Spider-Man, but I've gotten him so many times that I'm also right. like, I kind of want the adult teacher Spider-Man. And I want the insomnia. Sp- I want all the spider Man. Mm-hmm. I want all the spider people. And it's interesting that we've seen this arc from Civil War through Endgame and Far From Home. And it's really taken us that long of a journey to now through this movie, take that arc and complete it. Because I think one thing that a lot of people had issue with, and even myself included, if I'm being nitpicky, is that Tom Holland's Spider-Man was always kind of having a little too fun. And Spider-Man's a fun character and he's goofy and he's talkative and he's making quips and he's having a good time, but there's a, there's a tragedy to that character too. And usually that tragedy comes in from comics like Spider-Man Blue or even One More Day or the death of the Stacys or uh, countless others. Mm -hmm. But normally, and I think it's in Spider-Man Blue, it's one of my favorite lines of like, even when I'm winning, I'm losing. And there's a duality of like, when things are good for Spider-Man, it's usually Mm -hmm. bad for Peter Parker. And when things are good for Peter Parker, it's usually bad for Spider-Man. And that kind of duality is interesting. And Tom Holland and Spider-Man, like Tony Stark and Iron Man, have been so synonymous until now. Yeah. And it really took the Mysterio far from home ending to kind of shock that into place and be like, well, now it's bad for both of you. And now we're going to have this kind of debate of who do you really want to be? Do you want right. to be Peter Parker? Do you want to be Spider-Man? Doctor Strange's whole agency is you you're living these two lives and until you decide one or the other one, this is just going to keep happening. It, it, and I, yeah, that ending immediately raises the stakes for, for Peter Parker. And he has to make a, he has to kind of make a decision on that duality. And it, it's something that we had not seen before. There had not been a lot of weight to anything that sort of happened with Peter Parker, our Tom Holland, Peter Parker prior to this. It had all seemed like you said, fun, even, even the stuff, that happened with Endgame and Infinity War while he was there, he wasn't the person that took it as seriously as everybody else. It kind of just happened to be a, the young kid doing those jokes. So in this, we get a lot of heavy lifting for, 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 for him in this. And a lot of that is because, I mean, granted, we're all happy because we didn't get to have to see Uncle Ben get shot again. But a lot of that, that is typically his impetus of tragedy that happens in these stories and for the, him, we don't we don't have that for his story because in our world uncle ben died off screen probably too young for it to actually even really affect uh, affect him um but we we get a part of that as we go along in the back end of this uh, yeah i think the, the uncle ben stuff for tom holland i think we can assume <clears throat> happened i'm now going to guess his freshman year of high school that we're about to see an animated form because mm-hmm. he has a line in homecoming i believe where he says to Ned, oh, I can't tell Aunt May who I am. She's already been through so much. And I know that the Russos talked about the room he's in in Civil War is meant to look like he just moved into it because the implication is that they've left just wherever recently. they were staying from Uncle Ben. Yeah. But, you know, the, you, you don't really feel that moment before, except for in Civil War when he's talking about, like, why he's doing what he's doing to Tony and who he is and why... He's taking this path. And then the rest of it is just kind of like, we're having a great time. Right. He gets the girl very easily. He's not balancing another job. Like there's So much of Spider-Man 2, Sam Raimi's Spider-Man 2 that's interesting is watching him try to spin all these plates at once and mm-hmm. this existential crisis of who I am. Tom Holland never really had that problem. And it turns out that his problem was that he never did that. It isn't really until he's forced to do it right. in a way that Tobey Maguire never had to. It was sort of baked in his DNA. Tom Holland had to have it put in front of his face and was like, choose. Because now every single person you know who knows that you're Spider-Man and knows what you're doing is getting affected through college applications, job applications, yeah. where they're living. They just can't do it. Where they're Should living. we start helicopters are always at outside their door that they're being watched 24 7 it is it is a creepy almost horrific scene to see them have to go through like metal detectors to get to to their school and then just have everyone in that hallway have their phones up just watching like that's that's just insane like that's how much of that microscope 
just comes in on him and he just needs that escape. It's it's a it's a chilling scene that happens at the very beginning of the movie, but it's just like, oh my God, this is this is something we've never we've not seen before. No, they did a very good job of taking, you know, however many of these movies I said we got earlier, eight, yeah, nine, like, and giving us not ironically, no new villains and a new onus and agency for the character that we've done in the comics and in video games. I feel like they pulled a lot from the Insomniac Spider-Man game and a lot from more recent Spider-Man arcs, but we haven't seen that on the screen before. We've never seen, even in the Sam Raimi movies, when J. Jonah Jameson is, is signaling the cry, it's really just a guy in a newsroom getting mad right. and a few cover stories. This is protesters and people throwing paint and investigations mm -hmm. and should we get into the spoilers now should we give everybody their warning yeah not that yeah. i i'm sure you've all seen it it's on track to make 233 million dollars <laughs> this weekend yeah so i don't know what rock you're living under and i don't know why you sought out this podcast if you haven't if you, seen yeah, it if you don't want it, this is a movie but, that you should not have any type of information on so if you're here you you you're ready for these spoilers to come yeah but if you haven't, <clears throat> hit pause, uh, watch all of the Spider-Man movies, which are unavailable and streaming anywhere which at is the bizarre. moment. <laughs> They're on sale on Vudu. <laughs> go, go to Vudu and get them. Watch them all again. They are, for the most part, great. And then watch this one and come back. We will have gone nowhere because we're just data on your phone. Just sit there, pause. Just don't open anything else so that it remembers <laughs> where you are in it. Because exactly. I'm not checking timestamps. That's <laughs> your job because you decided to do it this way, a way that I don't know anybody who consumes podcasts has ever done it. I've never once listened to one and be like, I have to pause it and go make sure. Well, I, I will stop. I will come back never, to you later. <laughs> never. And this is not a judgment on you, except in all of the ways that it is. So you have been <laughs> warned. We're now going to get into spoilers. Spider-Man No Way Home, spoiler conversation. Everybody's back. Where should we begin? Well, let's the interrogation is what we were just talking about. Should we just get right into it there and just go through this? Yeah. Uh look, there's so many random cameos that just happen in this movie. And it, it's it's a delight. Each one sort of one ups the other one. I think the biggest uh obviously is the 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 return of the Parkers, our original two Peter Parkers. Uh both. Garfield and and Toby are here to play and it it's a delight I look Toby had a, a lot of chances at these and his films are pretty much well regarded I was the happiest for Garfield because I know his his movies get much maligned even though I think Amazing Spider-Man is one of the greatest films like in this entire I will uh, sit here all day with you and defend Amazing Spider-Man 2 if I have to Terrence yeah I think I think that first one and I think a, a lot of two works it's just there's some the Han the Green Goblin oh, there's a lot of stuff that work. doesn't could you imagine if their cure for Green Goblin was Andrew Garfield's blood in this movie could you imagine <laughs> if they had brought that back I didn't think about that till I ended it I was like wouldn't it have been hilarious yeah if he was like I can cure the lizard also no, just just <laughs> His son in my world was on some crazy bullshit. There's some crazy stuff going on in there. But yeah, we get them back and it is a delight to see them on screen. And I was happy for Garfield the most because I think he gets much of a line. But the, some of the most joyous moments in this is when they're just having conversations with each other. And we get a lot of fan service stuff that we always think about. We always think uh, the, the web shooting stuff being part of it, all of that stuff being in there. I thought... If they were going to be here, it was going to be a lot like the ghost, the OG Ghostbusters were in the uh, Ghostbusters movie, where it's like a quick thing. No, they are in this for the entire last act, and they have a lot of scenes, and it's really well done, and doesn't feel like they're being forced into the because it's like we have all said, it's still very much Tom Holland's uh, world. They are just adding to it, and a lot of it, they are there to sort of direct Spider Man because. Uh, in this, uh, a tragedy happens to him, and he is about to, he's he's going down a path, of, <laughs> much like Anakin going down a path that I can't follow. Uh, he, he starts getting dark, and it's like I I want to I want to kill the person who, who who killed my Aunt May. As spoilers, Aunt May is uh, gets bites the bullet, and so they are there to sort of be like, hey, that's not that's not what we do. 
that's not how that's not the spider-man way there's this great responsibility your aunt gave you the, the great quote that we've all know the spider-man's always get we've had it i've had it from my uncle he had it from his uncle you are supposed to be the better of us and what was crazy to me and i don't know like i just kind of like got sad it was like andrew garfield is living in his his world as peter parker being a very violent spider-man he's like yeah that I'm was a pulling my punches anymore a really interesting moment to come in on is that Andrew Garfield is, you know, post Gwen, post Electro, and is like, and he, he's, it sounds like he's coping with it. Cause what he says is like, I got dark and I stopped pulling and I became bitter and I don't want you to be that way. Yeah. But what was very interesting and very nuanced about Andrew Garfield's performance in this movie, I thought, is that even when he sounded happy, he sounded broken even like they did some obvious moments of it him and toby have a nice moment in the third act where he goes like i i just you guys are all so great and, and toby's like i feel like you need me to tell you that you're all so amazing yeah you need me to say this and he's like i kind of did but there's these smaller moments where he's the one that hugs them and says i love you and he's the one that gets everybody kind of together and just wants to see it and he keeps calling himself lame and even in beats where Electra's like you're not the shit anymore spider-man he doesn't have a quip he just like looks down yeah there's so many moments where it's like oh even this like, is he, he, he lost even <laughs> when they count off the spiders like i'm spider-man one i'm spider-man two it's like i'll find i'll be spider-man three it's like those moments where he's like i am i am i am beating up on myself and i've been doing this for so long that that's why the moment that i think our audience lost their mind i knew we all sort of called it and I was like, I hope they do it. But him, him being the one to save MJ from her fall, and his response to oh, that, he broke just starts me. crying. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and it, it that was so great to see because a part of me was like, man, I just don't know that Toby or Tom could do this. this like it, Andrew Garfield is just he's just such a good actor. Yeah. This is great. It's fantastic. It's it plays so well. I was like, oh my god, that is the moment that we all wanted. And it again, it is something that if you watch all the films, that hits you just in the gut. You're like, shit. <laughs> right, because I feel like in Amazing Spider-Man two, for everybody's sort of issues with it, everybody pretty much unanimously agrees that Gwen's fall is very well done. Yeah. Uh, is, is very well done, is very well directed, is very tragic, and him at the grave is very sad and very tragic, and all of it is excellent. It's where the movie really gets great. Yeah. And it's also something that, like, you know, Toby always had this spark of optimism in the Sam Raimi movies. Like, the, the end of Spider-Man 1 is very sad when he, he makes this choice to be Spider-Man, and he tells MJ no, and he's got this secret from Harry, but he still walks away with this like suave confidence from that funeral. And he gives that monologue of like, but I'm Spider-Man and mm -hmm. it's not easy, but I'm, I'm awesome. And Spider-Man two ends in a very incredibly upbeat way where he's gonna have everything and he's swinging through the go, city and he's go going, he's yeah. having a great time. Yeah. And like Spider-Man three's ending is very ambiguous and, and not great, but yeah there still is this kind of ounce of like, they're going to end up together. Everything's going to ultimately work out for Tobey Maguire and it's going to be fine. And he sort of confirms that in this movie when he's like, it took us a while, but we got there. But like yeah. Andrew Garfield's Spider-Man, even the lizard in that first one has that very Shakespearean, oh, Paul, Peter Parker, <laughs> no father, no mother, no uncle. Like it's just constantly yeah. like, it's how they treat Daredevil. It's like, you just can't get a break. Yeah. But I love that we kind of give him that break. He even comes in with the, the Tom Brady throw in the last minute to save the day. Like it kind of becomes, he, like they all come together to win it, but it's like Andrew Garfield's the one that he, he throws the pass that yeah. saves it. Yeah, he, he needed the win and it was it was very well well received. I, I All three of the Spider-Men was great. And obviously you get some of those classic posters. Like I, there's some of these shots that I want as a poster. <laughs> Like the shot of all three of them uh, prep right before they fly swing off. I was like, oh, that's that's money right there. But my favorite was the gargoyle one that I was talking yeah. about when we were in spoilers. When you just see them both 
in any other oh. movie, you'd be like, oh, they're Shadow. bad. These are yeah. evil, evil people. Yeah. There's a lot of crazy shots like that that happen in this movie. Uh, I think one of the greatest ones is when Peter is looking at the screen of Jonah delivering the news and it's just a big screen and he's just sitting there with his mask off and just bawling. I was like, well, that that's a money shot right there. Um, oh, and just we, the anxiety of the opening of him trying to oh, close all these windows and oh, t- not check the phones and it's that crazy. one shot following him through the apartment. And just answering the dude response, because that's how you would talk to your friends, like, dude, dude, what, like, like, just the world is falling apart. What the fuck do we do? It's, it's, it's impressive. We, we, there are so many of them, but we have to talk about the villains uh, in this. They're all back, every one of them, um, and including the ones that you were like, "Hey, they're only talking about electro." Uh, but we're missing two. We have one from every movie. We don't true. have we, James Franco's New uh, Goblin. Goblin. I hate that we call him New Goblin. Yeah, we'll always hate that we call him New Goblin. I will never get over the fact that we call him <laughs> New Goblin. Uh, well, we're also missing three, I guess. We also don't have Dane DeHaan's Goblin. Right. And we don't have Topher Grace's Venom. Eddie Brock yeah. and Venom. Yeah, Correct. we don't have Venom. Um, everyone else is back, and their actors are back, and voices are back. So John uh, Thomas Hayden Church, uh, Brian Ithens, they, every everyone is here in some form or, or fashion, and it's good to see them all. But I think, uh, I mean, Molina is doing great work. He is. Uh, you want to go through these guys? I think we should go through these one at a time. Yeah, let's do it uh we'll we'll leave the we'll leave we'll leave the the, the, the big guy let's go small to big yeah let's do that let's start um, with uh let's start with lizard because i actually loved it <laughs> um you know he shows up right away dr strange catches him which already kind of tells us like yeah he's gonna be the little guy yeah but uh i think what i liked about him what i appreciated him is that he's just still on his i'm gonna turn everybody to lizard's kick yeah that's his thing and this is also with all these villains where the movie gets very meta and self-referential in the ridiculousness of everything. Yeah. Because even Electro, whose character was just so whiny and sad in Amazing Spider-Man 2, is like, your whole thing was lizards for everybody. Yeah. Lizards, lizards. And he's just like, yes. And you know, Max, I could make you a lizard. Wouldn't that right. be amazing? Amazing. Yeah. It's, it's, it's funny and meta to be... In this story, these guys are are all pulled from their world like moments before their 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 death, like moments before their death. But obviously, because they some of these folks come like Max comes after Lizard in the in that franchise, they are aware how the previous person was deceased and and, and gone. Yeah, so it is fascinating. That they call them out like, yeah, this this and this, or like I was made by falling into some eels. Oh, I've failed. I failed too. Like that is all. Got to be careful where you fall. <laughs> that is a fun that is a fun call on that but yeah the lizard's the lizard's fun he's he's is the weak not the weakest he's the lowest on the totem pole of all of these folks um well his agency never changes right he's even the one that when they're like let's all go up to the apartment uh for those who haven't seen the movie and are just hanging out for spoilers spider-man decides to ultimately not help go with dr strange's plan of just sending them all back and instead goes i can cure everybody with a incredible scene that we'll talk about soon with Norman Osborn and Aunt May and Aunt May saying, we don't just send people back to die. We can help these people. They're lost. They're displaced. We need to help them not just get home, but get mentally we'll well. Yeah. Cause it almost feels, it, it, it sort of plays kind of how war veterans or homeless folks come back and they just, well, that's it, she's at feast. She's she at is, the homeless. Correct. Yeah. And so they kind of are just like, ignored and, and thrown away and that's what they're about what uh uh, uh peter and and uh dr stranger are about to do until peter changes his mind um, and so they're staying in happy's apartment for safety happy has stolen some stark tech and peter is going to start playing scientist yeah to fix everybody the lizard has chosen not to go up to the apartment I'm not going upstairs. which i don't know why that wasn't immediately suspect to everybody else uh, and then he has one kind of quiet line when everything goes wrong of like it begins and then he sort of just runs off. Yeah. And we don't really get into why you don't or what get he too, wants. Yeah, you don't get too much of the impetus of why he ran or what he's doing there. He just happens to be there. Uh, sort of. The you just title. get the sense <clears throat> that he doesn't want to do it. He doesn't right. want to go back. He doesn't want to be fixed. Yeah. He believes in what he's doing. 
he believes it's right. And he probably also has the sense that everybody else is the same way. And is just like, well, once it all goes bad, They'll come I, back. I'm the guy down here that can just go get everybody. Yeah. Yeah. Um, next up would be Flint Marco, Sandman, uh, Thomas Aiden Church. His, his, he is interesting in that. And I, it's this the is, weakest one of them, I think. I think, yeah. And I think it's a lot of, because his agency keeps flip-flopping. Like he keeps going from, I'm helping Peter to not helping him to, to doing it. And a lot of that is because his input is like, I just want to get home and whoever can help me get back to my daughter is the case. But it feels weak because he's so flip-floppy. Like it doesn't Well, when, when we meet him, Electro is about to fight Tom Holland and Sandman gets up and protects him and says, don't you remember me? I'm here to help. He helps him. He distracts him. He gets zapped. Then Sandman gets zapped. And they all get zapped into Doctor Strange's chamber where Sandman, of course, who is also just a brown CGI case good the whole time yeah i kind of was hoping we'd get the actor like i don't know why i I have a feeling like we just could get thomas hayden church on set for the majority of the time because right most of the time if i'm correct in spider-man 3 when he even is sandman he is in thomas hayden church mode yeah it's not till the end where he floats away into the ether yeah so i guess we're we're led to assume that spider-man 4 would have been another sandman movie where this would have happened we'll never know um but unless they make another spider-man 4 (laughs) who knows now but yeah i i agree with you because he spends so much time being like with peter and on peter's team i want to help and i'm gonna help and then everything goes to hell in a handbasket at the apartment and he just sort of floats away again into the ether and then the next time we see him he's playing the mummy face right and when uh, whichever Spider-Man says to him, we want to help you, he just is like, I don't care. And I was like, but you, wh- I'm confused. You, do. <laughs> <laughs> you needed like one more, you just needed like a scene with him in Electro where Electro's like, you don't want to, you don't want to not be a sand man. Yeah. It, Something. It, it doesn't, it's not clear as to why he keeps going back and forth. And part of it is like, I, I know originally, I think, our Peter Tom Tom Holland shoots uh, Electro first, and he sees him goes away, and 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 Marco gets a little nervous, like, "Hey, did you kill him? What did what you happened? do? Like, what did you do with him?" So he's a little freaked out, and he can hear um, that that's not his Peter. Like the voices, they do a good job of saying that the voices are different, and they can kind of tell even behind the mask. They feel like that's you're not my Spider Man. Um, he can tell that that's not him, so he becomes a little untrustworthy of him. But it doesn't make sense why he then goes back to trusting him and then not that it just it's it's not clean um outside of like person. maybe he didn't think it worked because of what happens to norman yeah. although i say, think all of them sort of end up going this way to just see if peter can possibly because they do know that on the other side of this if they all go back immediately they all die so right that might be why they're like well let's at least see if this kid is can help but at the same time, some of them are just like, I just want to stay here, which is mostly what Electro's like, hey, I'm good right here. Uh, and Jamie Foxx gets to play around and not be blue and not be weak. And I thought he, him and Andrew Garfield, I thought stole the movie. Yeah, they have a lot of moments and a lot of just great, you could, t- you could tell that Jamie was like, hey, if I'm going to do this again, I'm going to just be me. Like, I'm, I'm, not, I'm not doing this. Ter- and, and don't be wrong, I think Jamie Foxx is a great character actor. I just think that that was whatever he was doing with Max in Amazing Spider-Man Two just didn't didn't work uh, until he was in Electro mode. Then I think he was fine. Um, but in this, he gets to sort of just be more of him. He's a very good suave, suave and 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 likable person. Uh, and then doing that as the villain, it it all played really well. Well, and they they made his motivation work because he immediately shows up and looks different and is like, I, I'm down with this, which was an interesting thing to be like, they kind of do all look different when they get here. There is something in that change. Right. Uh, we don't get too, like, it's not like Looper where you sit here with sticks and see where we're all going. Uh, but they kind of just quickly are like, ah, oh, we all, time, we yeah. look different, whatever run with it (laughs) but i then liked that you know he figures out how to make his electricity stable with stark tech Mm -hmm. he ultimately decides i don't want the electricity to drain out of me which is what peter's plan is to do i would rather be in control of it and i don't want you to take it away from me 
and I want to stay here. He has a great moment with Flint where he's looking out at the city and is like, isn't this, this is something else. We could really do some damage here. And it's a very interesting moment where you're like, oh, he, of all five of these characters we have here, him and Lizard are the two that are like, well, we could just- I just want to wreck shop. We could just run this town. Yeah, like I could own this. Um, he is the most, I think, steadfast in his belief. Um, we'll get into to Osborne. He, there's still a duality to Osborne. This for 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 him, he's just like, no, I'm in it. I want to. I want to burn this. And I think down. that's what made it so powerful. Whenever you do see him, or he was like, no, I don't want your help. Yeah, I don't want to go back. I'm not going to die to my Spider Man. I'm not even going to risk it. Mm -hmm. I'm just going to fix myself. And I'm going to destroy everything while I'm at it. And I was like, this is great. This is a, this is just a man who is so defeated in his world and he's getting the freshest start he could possibly imagine and has opted to, he doesn't even want to go back. Screw hearing me and going back. If I go back, like one thing they don't say is if he goes back, even if Spider-Man doesn't kill him, he's still a loser. Well, that's, that's the thing. In, in his world, in that world, he is weak. Nobody, he, he lives, believes that nobody sees him. Even when he has a little, the, the silent moment or quieter moment, once he's, he's sort of defeated with his, his Spider-Man, he kind of is like, you didn't see me. You didn't know who I, like nobody knows who I was. Like in that world, he, he wasn't anything. But in this world, he believes that he could be a god. And that's why he's like, I'm not leaving here. I can run this. Uh, and it's, it's, it's fascinating to have at least one of those characters be like, 100%, I don't want to leave here. Uh, and that's, 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 what, that's who his character sort of holds, holds down the fort up. Yeah, I, I think that that's, because otherwise the movie's very easy. You just carry everybody and you go home. You sort of right. needed somebody who was like, I'm playing ball, but This is no. fine. <laughs> yeah. uh, that leaves us with two more. And then the post credit scene. We got Otto. Yeah, I was like, do yeah, we'll do Otto first because I feel like there's more to talk about with Norman. Yeah, uh, uh, Otto kind of just speeds through his Spider-Man Two arc, which I love, but he's the first one to show up. Mm -hmm. This bridge sequence, which also does a great job of showing Spider-Man uh, a, a path he could have taken, because one moment I do like is the Doctor Strange of it all, where he's like, Peter, you came to me before you tried everything else. You haven't called the colleges to plead your case because the entire agency for this is that nobody can get into college. Nobody can move on with their lives. So Peter decides it's better to wipe me away from existence so that y'all can get educated and live your lives and be happy. And in a great both joke and serious moment, Strange is like, well, I don't have the time stone. Didn't you at least call the college? And he was like, I didn't do that. I didn't know I can. Well, I didn't know that was a possibility. He finds... He finds the woman in charge of admissions, tracks her down on the highway, and that's when all hell breaks loose. Yeah. At he this point, Peter has ruined the spell because he keeps telling Strange to change it. It gets out of control, and some people have slipped through. And the first one we see, the first time, like an like a old band playing their biggest single, our theater erupts. When that, yeah. Which a part of me was like, I'm all here for the theater applause. We saw this in the trailer. <laughs> yeah, there are a couple. Of, there are a couple of moments that happen, like that one. And the first time that we see the 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 the, the bomb come through, you're like, guys, you, we knew this was happening. <laughs> I want to hear the dialogue. I don't know. <laughs> uh, that tentacle comes up. It got me then. It got me there. Oh my god! He comes up, and immediately Otto is just, "Where is my machine? I know you're Peter Parker," which gives us a sense of where in the story of Spider-Man Two we awesome. are. Yeah. Um, because he knows who Peter is, he wants his machine. Obviously, Tom Holland is confused. He rips the nano off in one of the coolest bridge action sequences we see that still hones in on this great character moment for Peter, where he spends the entire fight trying to save this admissions officer for her to realize, you're actually a hero. I'm going to look into all you this stuff, your friends. Proving that Strange is right, that there was a path Peter could have taken and gone, just prove them all wrong. Right. That's what Toby Maguire did. Yeah. Prove them all wrong. Just go prove them all wrong. We don't have yep. to do this. But, you know, now Doc Ock is here. He gets his cool Iron Man tentacles when he rips the nano off. He immediately doesn't know who Peter is. And then we play some of the, the meanest, coldest Doc Ock, Alfred Molina bits when he's stuck in Strange's temple. 
temple. I guess it's a temple, a castle, whatever it is, yeah. somewhere mystic, <laughs> uh, the, sin, the sanctorum. Yeah. Uh, he is just mad. Yeah. Mad. He's giving context to who Osborne is. He's telling us everything. All we know is that he does not recognize Tom Holland as Peter Parker. And he's the first one that Peter goes, your chip is broken. We're going to turn it on. We're saying the power of the sun in the palm of the hands. It works. Peter switches him back. Norman gets where he gets to in the end of two. He's now in control of the tentacles. There's also some great stuff where once he gets the nano on, Peter can control the tentacles, which this was just a delight dope. to that watch. Is yeah, it's fun. That was so good and creative and smart. And I loved it when he just stretches it in and Otto's just screaming and he wraps him up and he spent that whole time. And from there, Otto becomes good. Alfred Molina is, of course, a great actor. There's the yeah. explosion in the apartment. Don't see him until the third act. Mm -hmm. He shows up and proves that he was always that good person that was gonna that was gonna feed people poetry. <laughs> That's who he is. Exactly. Exactly. And then uh, and then we have the final boss. If well, you hold will. on, because he does have that great beat with Toby Maguire's Peter of just you grew up, Peter. He does. He does gives, have that. He we finally do get sees this him. Yeah. great catharsis. Um they even oh, repeat that, a line from that from that from that first one. Uh, I forgot what it is, but yeah, it's it's a really cool moment to see these villains interact with their 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 counterpart from their own film. Or, especially Peter moment. and Otto, because they had such a good friendship in Spider Man Two, and then yeah. don't really get any um, heart to hearts in the end because obviously everything's on fire. Yeah, and so it was sort of fun to have them have this like, yeah, well, I grew up. It's good to see you. We did it, and now, yeah, presumably you're going to go die. Um, yeah. <laughs> um, and yeah, that brings us to our big bad, who uh, we never will, but give the man an Oscar for this role. How is Willem Dafoe better as Green Goblin in this movie than he was in the film that he was already damn good in? Like it's impressive that twenty oh, he, plus years. He's now up there with Heath Ledger's Joker. In yeah. terms of actor to supervillain, he is insane. now up there with Thanos for MCU best villain. Yeah, he is the onus for Peter's journey. He is, of course, because he's the Green Goblin. That's what he does. He's throwing people off buildings in the mm -hmm. comics, and he's throwing them off bridges. There, he's even the one who pushes Otto Octavius when he's Superior Spider-Man to realize he can't be Spider-Man. Green Goblin is the spider-man villain there is yeah. no one that stands that his, against him yeah that's his that's his <laughs> he uh, even kills peter parker in the ultimate comic books i guess yeah. kind of the punisher does but he delivers that last blow i think it's fascinating and it's it a smart choice to have lose the mask because that mask is very hindering uh as far as the facial uh stuff goes and willem when that thing comes off and he starts doing the duality of back and forth between the two it, it's creep. It's much creepier than the actual mask is. Well, uh, I'm a I'm a sucker for a broken superhero mask. The Dark Knight Rises did it, and it was great. Spider Man keeps doing it when we throw the mask into the trash can. Uh, I love it. I love it in Iron Man three. I love seeing that broken mask. So when he shatters it, because you know he comes out, we have these great moments. He laughs. He flies off. They are. He argues with himself in the alley. Then he wanders to Aunt May's feast, mm -hmm. homeless help, and and Willem Dafoe is back to Norman Osborn, fully, presumably, doing some of the most incredible acting and incredible writing that we've seen in a Spider-Man movie ever. Everything about I'm lost, Oscorp doesn't exist, my son is and gone, here, I yeah. need help, I don't know who I am, I don't know where I am, I don't know, I don't know, I don't know. And he's just so on Spider-Man's team he lines up with Aunt May to give Peter that great, like, we help people. This is not a bad person, Peter. This guy, he is lost. His mind is lost. You can help him. You need to help him. And he gives him the whole, but Dr. Strange said, and she, because she's amazing, just does not care what Dr. Strange I don't said. give a damn about that wizard. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe if Wong had said it, because now Wong is the Sorcerer Supreme. That's true. He was right. Doctor Strange should not have been casting that spell, but, <laughs> but <laughs> I love that. We haven't talked about Wong, and we'll get to the side characters, but 
just having that beat of Wong, like, yeah, I rose to the rank when you were blipped out. Yeah. And yeah, I've been out recruiting Shang-Chi. I've been out figuring out these rings. I've been out training the abomination. I got a lot of stuff I'm to doing do. I'm doing stuff. Yeah. Yeah. Like, <laughs> Doctor Strange was Sorcerer Supreme. It was like, I'll make tea with Thor. <laughs> <laughs> just saying, Wong's out there hustling. He might yeah. be the man for the job. Yeah. Uh, we then get to the, the house with all the, with everyone and, and, a, and an amazing showcase of the Spidey sense. I love that scene. When he, oh, when, yeah. When Peter just knows something is wrong. And he just has sensed that Norman has switched from Norman Osborn to Green Goblin mode and just calls it out. And then one of the greatest action sequences that I have seen in a very long time takes place. And it is viscerally brutal. Oh, the, the, the Goblin's brutality. is Because now it's just goblin yeah there is no debate there is no battle one is some of the they've always given good lines to the green goblin finish the prayer godspeed spider-man don't tell harry attack the heart out yeah. am i two weeks but when he has that lie where he's just like i looked at you deep behind the eyes of the coward i was born i was like oh he is on some palpatine shit now <laughs> that was holy hell that was a fucking lie i have never known as a wrestling fan i have never known that i wanted to see spider-man get power bombed through five floors or multiple floors until i saw it i was like oh well damn that escalated very quickly <laughs> oh and just the best and saddest way of killing Aunt May. Yeah. The person that she has decided to save, she's put everybody in this, and her reward for it is to one, say the great power, great responsibility line at the MCU. The yes. I love it. Yeah. But two, no good deed goes unpunished. And we, we learned that Goblin's whole, he kind of inspires Jamie Foxx. He has that line that I think is like, gods don't wait or some, something about gods. Yeah. They're all gods is what he's saying. And this potential and we don't need to waste it. And why he really has something to say. And he's almost now on this like Batman Joker. I'm going to push Spider-Man mm -hmm. to the brink. I am going to make you do all the things you don't want to do because you're too weak and scared to live up to your potential. So I'm going to make it happen. I'm going to make all of these people go to their potential and I'm going to do it because I'm at my peak. It is terrifying. It is. And that weird grin he's got with that purple hood up, that's scarier than that Power Rangers mask ever 100%. was. 100%. 100%. Oh my God. What he's doing with his eyes is just crazy. Yeah. Now, Willem is, is in another gear for this. Uh, and, and and so he he is without a doubt the quintessential villain of this movie. Like he is the the the, the bad. And uh, so we get to that finale, and he is still full in full on bad bad mode. Like they actually hold him. Everyone else is sort of getting cured first, and they're like, we we know he's coming around the corner. We know this isn't over until we deal with Goblin. And I love that after all that interaction that sort of the uh, the Peters have had with. Tom Holland's Peter Parker about like, hey, you need to, you're the best of us. You need to be the good one. You need to do all this. And then we get to that sequence at the end where after this huge battle, uh, Parker and, and, and Norman are one-on-one -on -one and Parker's about to, he's about to kill his dude. You couldn't even send me back to my death because I wanted to kill you myself. <laughs> I yeah. was like, oh, no. <laughs> I was like, Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> and that fight, when he goes to just bash him and he rolls over and that hole is left. I was like, man, there's there's a great scene in the first issue of Superior Spider-Man when Doc Ock has infiltrated the brain of Peter Parker because comics are dumb. And he <laughs> punches, I think it's the scorpion, and he punches off the scorpion's jaw. And Otto Octavius in the body of Peter is like, oh, oh, every single time I have fought Spider-Man, he's held back. I had no idea he could do that. I did that without thinking. And I was like, there's something great about Spider-Man that you really never see him at full. Mm -hmm. He's never really going all out. Right. And to see him kind of go all out here, that was some of the craziest, just one on one. Yeah. They're trying to kill each other. It, it, they it are. was awesome. It, yeah, it was intense. Uh, something you don't really think you'll see in a Spider-Man movie, especially the way that they have set up Spider-Man to be in these previous two films, but 
Man, I think we we earned it though because we, there's been a lot of there was a lot of pain and anguish up to that point. And so when we get there, and then obviously we get our OG uh, Spider Man kind of giving him the no. This this isn't you. Don't do this. Oh, he stops that glider with his hands. Yeah, I don't even. There's so many favorite moments of this movie. That I don't know. Yeah, I don't, I don't know what they are. I don't know what they are. There's so many of them. Um, we haven't talked about Daredevil. We haven't talked about Wong. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's uh, it's it's fascinating how we talked much about happy. <laughs> Yeah, it's fascinating how much this movie puts in that you're just kind of like, I love every single, it's, it's rare that I love every single moment of a movie, but this is, this is one of those. Oh yeah, I have to try real hard to be nitpicky about it. And I mm-hmm. have like sci-fi questions that we're not going to answer, but I will ask you what you think because the movie I think very purposefully is like, shh, don't, don't, don't worry about just, that. The, the biggest <laughs> one is like, where when they go back. Where did they go, Terrence? Where yes. did they go? Yes. Did, was all of this meaningless or are the other seven movies they... I've watched in my life meaningless? Exactly. It's like, are they cured when they go or back? are we on some they're... in-game nonsense where it's like, well, now, you know, Goblin's buried, but also he's right here because right. your past can't affect your future, which yeah. fine, whatever, I'll accept it. <laughs> maybe they're all from different worlds or maybe in Loki season two, he's going to put it all back together. And all of them, like, there's a part of me that's now like, Ooh, well, it is interesting in this. We, and TVA we don't, shit. It is interesting in this. We don't really, we haven't really talked about it. But while all of this is happening, some Spider-Man has somehow put Strange on the shelf for the good point of this. When he comes back, he has to close up this multiverse, and it's amazing that we just sit here with. There could be people in our world that did not that have already passed through. We, I definitely saw an image of Craven walk through there. You see Craven. I wasn't yeah. sure if it was Craven until I saw Rhino and went, oh, that's what we're doing. Yeah. Because um, the Craven so, was a little fuzzy. He had his like big like right. animal thing and his spear. And I was like, oh, that could be anything. But that Rhino is like, it was that's just Rhino. pretty prominent. So it's, it's, it's unclear if, if stuff has managed to stay on this side and just won't know who Peter is, which is fine, but they just, they're already on this side. Uh, but it is definitely a, a, a world that they're they're kind of like, hey, this multiverse is, is it, we're in it now. Uh, oh, hard. Yeah. Hard. Especially with the, the post credits, which we'll talk about in a second. But I, I think I, for me, I loved every part of this movie. But I think what, lo- what I loved even more is that the ending felt so much. It was Spider-Man to a It was a Spider-Man ending. It it's was a Spider-Man tragic, to a T. Uh, an tragic. upbeat tragedy. Correct. Like, there, uh, like there's so much optimism in that ending and yet like this is a spider-man because my big theory was like dr strange is going to open a portal tom hardy's venom or somebody is going to be like in my world there is no spider-man there's only venoms or villains venoms and <laughs> dr strange is going to open a portal and be like hey peter nobody here knows who you are anymore aunt may is dead do you just want to go know, to sony go somewhere else right like just and i was like and that to- would have been a great like the end of that business it would have made it clean it would have made it clean like here. clearly these two studios based on what tom rothman has said and what kevin fye has said and what amy pascal has said it playing. sounds like avi arad because he got his flowers at the end of this it yeah. sounds like everybody is now playing we're, very nice we're good yeah, yeah i mean kevin's come out to say like whatever you guys were afraid of that happened at the end of last that last film we did that's not how we're, we're, talking, we're not doing, we're doing that this. yeah we're in it so uh, that's clear even the way they ended it that is clear but what is also clear is that they have done a clear line on the sand that like okay we are now putting spider-man on the boards of the way that we think spider most people want spider-man to be we're gonna get rid of all that tony stark stuff we're gonna close up all those loops we're gonna put him by himself where he just listens to a cb radio or listen to a radio in an apartment by himself just him and everything that he knows and loves is gone and it's just him being the friendly neighborhood spider-man by himself with what is now the best live action costume Ditko has to be like wherever he's at. Bless him. It's like that's it. That's the one. That thing looked amazing. <laughs> yeah, I was like, ooh, it's a shame we're not seeing it in the day. <laughs> yes. Oh man, he's because sw- like the one thing you don't get much of in the Tom Holland movies is like literal swinging around New York. And I was like, we're in it now. We're swinging around. We're zipping. Yeah. Yeah, uh, not a lot of Christmas in the Spider-Man Christmas movie that I thought we were gonna get. Yeah, we don't really get anything until he gets. De- de- I mean, until the very ending when he goes back to see her, which we have to sort of talk about. Uh, the, the 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 spell that uh, Strange puts on is that everybody forgets who Peter Parker is. Everybody, including himself, which also means that Mary Jane and them do. So he has says his goodbyes, and he's like, "I'm gonna go find you when this up, and I will make you remember me." And he, he does get to her, 
and he sees how well she and Natalie changes his mind and just says nope you're better off without me jesus christ <laughs> oh it rips rips yeah, you apart it, it rips you in <laughs> he's just sitting there like half crying yeah she's just said i love you and then she says don't say it back until you're back yeah and i just don't even know mm-hmm. i know it's a comic book movie and like the doctor strange can like hit three he can do whatever he wants you can reset yeah like we're fine yeah. and we can just undo this if but we just want seeing him put that note that he wrote wrote in his pocket was just like oh jesus oh yeah that was some intense stuff that was yeah. that was something i was like oh we gotta get we gotta get tom holland and some oscar scripts now this guy we cannot contain him to blockbusters no. anymore yeah all of them is in dia everybody's just cranking it out they are killing it um Loved that ending. I love I, I love the fun of a Spider-Man ending where he's zipping around and he's having a good time. I like there's always a side of Spider-Man, even when he's at his lowest, that he likes to be Spider-Man. Correct. And it but it was sort of oddly refreshing to have this incredibly depressing ending. Because it, it's it's even just such an antithesis of what the MCU usually does. Like not yeah. since infinity war have i been like i said but it's only now one other what? film yeah like, it's only one other film that ends where you're like uh what do we do next we um, almost what? all of them have a like we beat the villain we went home it's right. all gonna be fine this is yeah. the first time where i'm like you know though we didn't really beat the villain because the villain is still mysterio and mysterio won one yeah because he's he still he just mysterio just doesn't know who peter parker is right he has still made them all think that spider-man killed him yeah so the inciting incident of this movie isn't even resolved no it's he, still spider-man bad. is still public enemy number one it's just now nobody knows that it's peter parker right yeah. oh <laughs> where do we go but that brings us to my big theory we'll do a few little theories and then we'll uh if we even have time who cares why did we make this movie because it was awesome we don't need to do that side of our podcast today. <laughs> um the reality is if we're really going to do that the only thing is that we we use nostalgia to push a franchise forward which we never do that's the only thing i've got for you this is the one time where we've been like we're going to take everything you know and love and we're going to use it to push it forward. Yeah. Because even when Doctor Who does it, they're like, the timelines are out of sync and the characters won't remember this. This was a fun moment that just happened. This is like, it was all real. Everything that no happened. One's, no one's waking up. Yeah, everything that happened, happened. We're just using it now to tell this story for our Spider-Man. Uh, so that kind of brings us to our post credit scene. Venom is there. He just blips in and out, but he leaves a little bit of black goo. Tom yeah. Hardy is now back in Tom Hardy land. Yes. And if I had to wager a guess, obviously we're setting up a black suit Spider-Man story because we just can't help ourselves. Have to do it. Uh, we got to do it. But I, I think that that's going to be the catalyst for everybody to remember Peter Parker. I think the symbiote is going to know who Peter Parker is. Maybe. And I yeah. think that's going to be the catalyst of like, this is how we undo it. Yeah. And then he's going to be a very upset and mad and symbiote Peter Parker. And it's going yes. to be like, remind the world of who you are. And then the world has to remind you of who you are. And then we're going to fight Venom, Venom I guess. I would imagine Venom, or if we put Craven on the board, some, ver- some version of that. Well, uh, Craven and Venom kind of go hand in hand. Craven's Last Hunt is a Black Suit Spider Man right. story. Uh, I would love to see that. I think we'll we'll, we'll get a little bit more gr- uh, grown up in that next one. Obviously, we're going to leave past the high school stuff. Uh, I would probably also like to see a, a version of this that does not have, although I love Zendaya, I, I think MJ, for at least the majority of the film, should be off the board, just so that we can get us just full. Well, it sounds like they'll Spider-Man. be off to MIT. Right. So, But at least at the end of that, he comes back. He, he's clear. He's, Kind of like uh, Tom Cruise in those Mission Impossible movies where he's still hawk watching her from afar. Like, yeah, I'm still keeping right. an eye on making sure that she's good, but I don't think she would be a, a, a major part of that. But yeah, no, we could introduce Black Cat. We can, we can, we can. Uh, and obviously, we're doing street level stuff. We didn't talk about it too much, but Matt Murdock is on the board. Uh, yeah, well, we haven't talked about Matt Murdock or Flash Thompson. I think those are the only two characters I can, and Happy. Those are the three that I'm like, they were all, they're all worth mentioning. Um, yeah. Flash is just hilarious. He's just, just hilarious. 
it, it, it's funny because we a little bit tongue in cheek because it is the Flashpoint book, which is also I feel I feel terrible. That's got to be a fun reference DC. to DC, right? I, I feel has terrible to be... for DC because that Flashpoint movie, which is basically going to try and do a lot of the things that this does, but not nearly as well. <laughs> they have to be referencing they Flashpoint. Have it it has to be, to be a fun. That's literally all I could think of. I was like, that has we to be just like referenced Batman and Superman and the Eternals. This has to be a reference to Flashpoint. Yeah, I agree, one hundred percent. There's no, they, otherwise you're just me being mean. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. <laughs> um, happy, I loved because it was just sad the entire time the entire movie we, we come in in this breakup that like we're kind of playing for laughs because peter's trying to hide what's happened but happy's like going through the worst day of his life yeah only to then go through the worst day of his life when he gets to his apartment that he didn't want any of these people in why are they to here? find <laughs> the love of his life dead, dead. yeah uh, and, and then, then boy does it break your heart does he's standing directly when next he's at to that him. grave with Peter. How do you know her? I don't think oh. I've ever, oh. ever been sadder in a superhero movie. Yeah, when I was just like, like, I just lost someone. I was like, oh, this dude is just cannot. There's nothing in his life. Not only is is Peter by himself now, Happy is completely solo. Everything that he knew well, and loved is around. gone. Peppers around. He'll be in Armor Wars with Rhodey. <laughs> Spider Man doesn't have a live action Disney Plus show. He has an animated one that I'm sure Tom Holland will not be the voice of. Yeah, that's Happy's that fine. He has brutal. Don Cheadle. Brutal. It's very brutal. And then, of course, the Matt Murdock of it all. Uh, oh my God. That, all I needed was that scene. <laughs> that's it. It was I those glorious. I would have liked to have seen Daredevil. A part of me was like, that man's going to show up in the third act and help him. He's it just was gonna... good. It was good to see that because we still aren't quite clear on how all of this is. This is canon to what we've seen before, but it's good to see that he is in full daredevil mode because he does use his senses to kind of stop. When he stuff. catches that brick, it was well, fantastic. <laughs> I mean, it's like it's like is it Mr. B? No, Charlie Cox is not Mr. B. No, he sits down in there and it, it is like he's been it here the like whole time. He's been here he's on his stuff. I 100%. love it. I love that he's talking to a Foggy Nelson in a different universe because John Favreau has been Foggy Nelson. It's before. true. That's true. Um, it is. It is interesting to me uh, that this is coming out the week after we've seen Kingpin. This is up all and, intentional. If you yeah. ignore the fact that it was delayed. <laughs> <laughs> exactly uh but in a weird way it kind of worked out because i was like you know if we had seen spider-man no way home at its original release whenever that was uh ever i think eternals and before that when i don't even remember yeah it would have been a lot easier to just be like that's kingpin we, we would have been called Hurry up and get to kingpin. like it's kingpin like let's let's put why is this, this game. in episode five get to Kingpin. yeah yeah uh so it kind of worked out in a very the same way that i think uh like Loki's ending, there was another movie that we were like, oh, let's, they're very intentionally like mm -hmm. see this and get there. Um, so it's all working out just fine. But yeah. Yeah, that was all great. That's, and I think. The cool. post, the, the other post credit is the trailer for Madness. Well, Terrence, which... I just don't have time to even try to remember all those cool images. There's all so I needed happening. was Wanda attending her garden. <laughs> yeah, it's like you show me Wanda, I'm in. And Strange being like, I don't care about Westview. I don't give and a then, damn about any of those. And then what people. if Strange showing up? <laughs> and then there's the giant monster we're gonna fight. And then there's Mordo. And then there's Wong being like, Why did you do that? Yeah. So clearly, we're all about to remember who Peter is. Because the, it seems like the onus of this movie is going to be like, you did a spell and we cannot remember why. Yeah. And I bet for it, it just has to be Wanda. A part Wanda's of me is going to be like, the one person who can remember it, like, hey, because look, what's going on. I'm definitely overthinking it, but whenever I see purple magic now, I just think Agatha. And mm -hmm. when it was all purple in that place, a part of me was like, she's somewhere doing And now something. that we know that she's still on the board, like there's a show, like some, she is around. Yeah. <laughs> But she's we're not gonna waste she won an emmy for them she's got a not damn theme song for god's sake she's yeah. not going anywhere <laughs> yeah no 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 that's all gonna be fine yeah that was uh nuts you got our first yeah. look at america chavez uh a second look if you want to count hasbro just being like here's the toys here she is, here she is. <laughs> <laughs> I, that was some cold <laughs> These I figure lines are getting out of hand because they are starting well, to they're on stuff. their own timeline they are like, they are 
It's like this movie should have been out by now. So here, <laughs> we got we've got a holiday coming. <laughs> so yeah, it looks like we're gonna get our our what if Doctor Strange. Mm-hmm. We're gonna get America. We're gonna get Wanda. We They're all gonna be on this. I, I, I forgot. Uh, we've been so far removed from a solo Strange film that I forgot that Chiwetel Ejiofor was Baron Mordo for a while. I'm like, oh yeah, this looks freaking well, fantastic. You know, character. I don't. I don't ask questions anymore because I had the same thing with Multiverse of Madness where I was like, but we set up this great Mordo villain story. And I'm like, it's fine. They're going to do that too. It's not we'll, you. We'll cares. get to that. Yeah. All the, it's all there. It's yeah. all in there. I don't need yeah. to worry. We yeah. brought Tobey Maguire back in who I feel like we didn't talk about too, too much, but all of his stuff was obviously great. This yeah. older, more subdued, almost smug spider. He just knows what he's doing. He uh, I loved all the bits of their webs. It's like, I want to talk about this. I don't. I don't want to talk about it, buddy. It's like breathing to me. The, the yeah, but like you know, thing, I have to make mine. It's a hassle. It sounds like a hassle. Does that come out of anywhere else? Like those those quips back and forth. I could just watch they, the, the three of them talking. The whole space thing. Like I've been to space. They made space. Tobey Maguire and Andrew Garfield sound more like Spider Man in this movie than they sounded like Spider Man in their Spider Man. I actually I always I always felt Andrew for the most part in the uniform. Of Spider-Man felt very much like uh, Peter Parker. Toby, I'd never really got that from until this film. This is the first time that I was like, oh, yeah, I can see how he would be Peter, Par- Peter Parker. And this is what Peter Parker would look like if he was that way young and now old. This all makes sense. Like, this tracks. But I didn't get that from his own films. They just did a much better job of creating that. Yeah, and it's it's uh, it's now on track for, it's 50 million, second only to Endgame for Thursday Night Numbers, on track yeah. for 2.30. We're about to, uh, the pandemic is over for Spider-Man. Yeah. This was the most appropriate movie for everybody to be wearing a mask. I it, appreciated it, that. Yes. It's very funny. I forgot which director it was. Um, definitely wasn't really Scott, but it was a director who was like, they asked him, because they ask all these directors when their stuff comes out about superhero films. And he was just like, look, I love them. They're fine. But I know it was PTA who was like, I might have been Paul Thomas. Great. He was like, but <laughs> I, I think, I think it was, was like, he was just like, but Spider Man is what's getting people back into the theater. So if that is what is doing it, then Spider Man is fantastic. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I love it. Um, yeah. It's great. It's so in, it's interesting when we're this far down the line of a franchise and we're on a podcast that is cynical by nature asking why we keep telling these stories. And yeah. This movie so eloquently solves that by going, well, there's there's just arcs for all of these characters that you love, that you were attached to. We don't need to just bring them back to be like, yay, they're back. We can we can give you closure on Toby Maguire and MJ's relationship. We can show you the man that he's become and how mature and on top of it he is. And we can give Andrew Garfield's Spider-Man redemption, both as the actor playing him and this arc of I couldn't save anybody. And they now do, I can they save both. somebody. They do both. Yeah. And all of that kind of culminates in this really cool arc for Tom Holland, where they can't they can't fight these guys. And he's the one who goes, We're not working as a team. I've been a member of a team. It's time you listen to me. Mm-hmm. And it, it's and we've never also really done a rehabilitation villain story. We have in a very literal sense of like, well, Loki's kind of come around. Yeah. And we've seen villains. A This is a very, very literal. The hero is not trying to stop or hurt or kill. Or kill. Or yeah. We are now trying to physically rehabilitate and mentally and spiritually rehabilitate these people because the, the very unique thing that I have said cynically about Sam Raimi's Spider-Man movies is he does the same thing three times. It is, it is a person who is not bad, who is incorrupted by either the goblin serum, the tentacles, or a symbiote, and then they're just doing this duology the entire time. And even in the uh, Mark Webb movies, the Amazing Spider-Man series, we have villains who are just corrupted by whatever forces behind them this yeah, feeling like, of being ignored this feeling that Kurt i can fix my fix arm his, yeah yeah there there we don't have even like vulture just wants to help his family it, mysterio is probably the first villain we've seen in any of these movies who just straight up is like i'm mad i like I'm this burn it down yeah i'm gonna, right, like, I'm gonna burn yeah 
Like, how do you fix that man? You really would have to sit him down and been like, I'm sorry, Tony called your stuff far. Maybe be an adult. Yeah. Um, you still are a rich scientist. So I don't <laughs> feel too bad. Oh no, the rich white man is sad. Who cares? But this is the first time that we see a Spider-Man be like, I can, I can bring you all back. Mm-hmm. We can do that. And it proves Doctor Strange wrong, who is just like, hit the bottom and let them die. It's their fate. What we don't get into is that concept of fate and the concept of time. Because we, we did so much in Loki with the TVA of like, well, this is how it has to be. And now that's obviously gone. Right. But then that begs the question of like, is Norman Osborn just about to get impaled even though we cured him? And when he says, don't tell Harry in Spider-Man 1, is he looking up and being like, oops. Because all yeah. of, you could kind of give them all that, except for Sandman, who is just alive. Yeah, I he, guess. Just, he just basically apologizes and walks off to the sunset in Spider-Man 3, so yeah. So it's like you could assume that he just comes in there and is like, great, I'm back. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I'm not going to go mess around with Tobey Maguire because I wasn't going to do that in the first place. Yeah. I'm going to go see my daughter. Uh, you could kind of just assume that, yeah, maybe they all die because it's not like Andrew Garfield and Toby are sent to their time. Because they go back and, to a time that's past that, that point, that flashpoint for the villains. Yeah. So it, it's a flashpoint. It's bad. a question that they, <laughs> I think, very purposefully didn't answer because mm-hmm. you either get or and they might down the road i mean who knows multiverse of madness might deal with this it could. Loki season two might deal with this this could be kang himself might deal mm-hmm. with this um but i'm just a, such a weird person where i'm like i, I just don't want to put on spider-man 2 and be like, be oh, like, it doesn't it doesn't matter anymore no longer matters because he's going to get sucked out of this point and then something else is going to happen elsewhere yeah right but i guess you know that was and like Infinity War and Endgame did such a good job of being like no because time is a straight line right and you don't you and don't affect that you, timeline you create a new one of off that same branch yeah so it's like you could have that be the thing it's kind of also like I said for all we know Loki season two is going to be like maybe we need the TVA for all we know the end of his arc is going to be like we're not going to do it like Kang right but it. It's interesting. It does seem like Marvel and Sony are playing well with each other's toys right now. So we could get we could get further well, down I, into this. I've never been while. more curious about Morbius. Yeah. What yeah. what secrets does Morbius have? <laughs> I also really want so the two big things I wanted, and then I'll probably wrap up the show, but as as long as we're speculating, uh the two things, my pie in the sky is never gonna happen. I didn't even think about it till after the movie, so I'm not gonna pretend that I thought about it. Uh, I thought it would have been really, really cool if Liz had shown up as a new vulture after she figured out Spider-Man's identity. I was like, that would have been a fun, like, that man ruined your life. <laughs> yeah. Uh, that would have been great. Yeah. I also, uh, I was talking to our mutual friend Drew about Spider-Man. And like the two of us and our mutual friend Drew, we were also very big fans of Donald Glover. And he was like, it would be dope to do a Prowler story, you know, Miles Morales movie. And I was like, you know, mm-hmm. it would have been even cooler is if we had just had an older Donald Glover, Miles Morales, Spider-Man in this movie for like a minute. Yeah. <laughs> just like, a minute. Like when you look for, well, they kept referring to Peter, they, they purposely they kept saying Peter Parker. So if they did say Spider-Man, I would have wanted one of them to pull off, a pull, pull in. Would have loved having a Donald Glover yeah. show up. Yeah. I, I, I fully am on board with that. It's interesting. I was thinking earlier, I was like, oh, crap, because then you know there's a sequence. Well, at least I don't know if they've cut it or not, but there was a sequence in the trailers for Morbius where Vulture shows up. Uh, but now he no longer knows who Spider Peter, Peter Parker, Parker is. Parker is. Yeah. So I, I don't know what good that does anymore. <laughs> yeah, no, it, it is now. It's very, it's very interesting where I'm like, oh, all eyes are on morbius <laughs> a movie that we would have originally gotten before this one yeah i wonder if there's ever going to be an article or a documentary that's like here's everything that changed with spider-man this because of the, the pandemic right originally we were doing this and then because i did it was funny i did see a tom holland interview that the the, the murdoch scene came late like they were halfway through and filming. Oh, apparently a lot of this came late I, I i've heard that a lot of toby stuff was done last minute 
uh, where it's, you know, Zendaya said in that interview that it was originally a Craven movie and that all this, so I was like, oh, clearly a lot of stuff happened because a lot of people's schedules got real free. Yeah, real quick. Real quick. <laughs> um, yeah. But it was great. I now, I kind of walked into this being like, we can give live action Spider-Man a rest after this. I'm well fed. And now I'm like, if you don't give me- If you don't keep this going. <laughs> <laughs> keep just keep them going yeah i'm with you uh i thought this was going to be one of those kitchen sink things and there's a lot in here but i love every damn minute you know the thing about a kitchen sink terrence is you need it you do a lot of people don't talk about that we're like we do the kitchen sink out of i'm like a kitchen sink has a lot of it's useful. if i bought a kitchen and there wasn't a sink in it i would be furious <laughs> uh so i don't know why that's a bad thing but yeah. that's our show guys uh this was obviously great it's my favorite spider-man movie now i don't even think that that is going to change it's just you know. so good yeah um go see it if you haven't already because now you know the whole thing front and back it's incredible. And then leave us a review. Leave us a comment on YouTube. Follow us on Hollywood ADI on Twitter and Instagram. I'm at, as always, Blake. Terrence is at Terrence Tatum. You can keep listening to our spinoff show. Hollywood already did it. Marvel pair up. That's currently going through Hawkeye for Christmas. Obviously, the finale of that's about to show up. So we'll have so much Hawkeye goodness to talk about. And we will see everybody ideally for The Matrix. We'll figure it out. We'll squeeze that in. <laughs> um, and then that'll be it. It's almost time for another year of are the movies coming out? (laughs) Our new favorite game show. Yes. All right. Later. Later.